So I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm going to be focusing more on segments that are not political. I'm going to be a little less political in nature. I'm not going to stop researching politics. Little, little side note. Um, this, this had me laughing when, uh, I saw this today presented with no context. Yeah. Pepe Le Pew was canceled today. And you know who also just uh, is they're filing to impeach? Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, for the sexual allegations. Not the COVID deaths, uh, even though it should be both. Um, you know, I guess five women now have come up to uh, and, and talked about how, you know, he's, you know, sexually assaulted them, which is terrible. It is, uh, it is terrible. So, yeah, yeah. Man of Culture says Adam's Variety Hour. Yeah, that, that's going to be more of what I'm going to be focusing on. I want to talk more about space. I want to be researching stuff that really gets, um, that really, you know, drives me forward. You know, excites me about the future. I don't want to sit here and complain. And I feel like I'm starting to do that more and more. Even now. I've, I've got two segments that I just did where I'm complaining. Ugh. I'm becoming that what I don't like and I just I just I'm recognizing it I, I you know I had a I have a really solid group of uh, of friends that that I work with that I brought on board on my team and um, you know they they're amazing and they're there for me and I we were chatting earlier and I'm recognizing that I just need to do stuff that I care I care about look I'm not super per well versed in the political world right I don't know all of the political aspects, the facets of all the, and, and all the things, the decisions that all these people have made for the past years, um, you know, to, oh, yeah, well, you're making this decision. Well, remember, six years ago, you, you made this decision, which, you know, I just that that's not me. That's not the type of person I am. I'm going to be doing more stuff that I want to do, you know, talking about space, talk about really awesome, you know, things we need to be paying attention to something like uh, NASA's asteroid watch. You may, may have seen headlines about an asteroid that will safely fly by Earth on March 21st. While this asteroid known as 2001 FO32 is large, it will safely zip past Earth at a distance of 1.3 million miles, five times further away than the moon. It poses no risk of hitting Earth. Thank goodness. Planetary defense experts continue to survey the skies to find and track asteroids as early as possible and are even working on the double asteroid redirection test, or DART, as a, a technique that could one day be used to deflect a hazardous asteroid off a collision course with our planet. See, this is something that we need to think about more often because if anything's really uh, a threat to our in, like existence is an asteroid. Do you know how many asteroids are out there? Look at this. Look at this. Check this thing out. This is a, uh, well, it doesn't tell you, but this is all of the things that are flying around. And this is the asteroid belt, which we're just inside of. I don't know if you, uh, if you realize. Yeah, someone in chat just says, it's pretty close. Yeah, it is pretty close. If you think about it, in the scheme of things, in the scheme of, like, how big things are in the universe. 1.3 million miles? That's not light years. That's miles. That's in something that we recognize. All right. Obviously, it's mil a million, over a million. Okay, so it's a lot. But still, it's like we got to worry about this stuff. Good thing NASA has a, a coordination for planetary defense, which I think we need to know about. Check this out. Near-Earth objects, NEOs, or NEOs, are asteroids and comets that orbit the sun like the planets, but their orbits can bring them into Earth's neighborhood within 30 million miles of Earth's orbit. Within 30 million, and this one's 1.3 million miles away, five times further away than the moon. That is pretty close, if you really think about it. Planetary defense is applied planetary science to address the NEO impact hazard. Good. NASA's established the Planetary Defense Coordination Office, the PDCO, to manage its ongoing mission of planetary defense, the PDCO provide early detection of potentially hazardous objects, FOES, the subset of NEOs which orbit predict 
uh, which orbits predict they will come within 5 million miles of Earth's orbit and a size large enough, 30 to 50 meters, to cause significant damage to Earth. Trax characteristics, uh, characterizes foes and issues warning of the possible effects of potential impacts. Studies, st uh, strategies, and technologies for mitigating foe impacts and plays a lead role in coordinating U.S. government planning for response to an actual impact threat. That's right, Armageddon. They're going to bring a bunch of drillers and fly them out there. No, that's probably not what they would do. The PDCO sponsors projects through its Near Earth Object Observation Program that employ a variety of ground and space-based telescopes to search for NEOs, determine their orbits, and measure their physical characteristics. The PDCO is studying possible space-based telescope missions optimized for NEO search and characterization that could accelerate the discovery of the current undetected NEOs. So I know this, that they only would be able to know about six to seven months in advance if there was something coming in that would hit our planet. That's not that much. Seven months? maybe eight months if they really get lucky and catch something that's going to come now we know what we we have trajectories of everything we know of but there may be objects that have such a long wide um you know cycle orbit around the sun that we haven't seen it yet that could potentially be coming in and in entering our orbit our, our trajectory we don't know Right, but we would only know six to seven months out. So having a a program like this, and and really pushing it is really important. I I think one of the more pressing issues of our time. We need to make that at least a year or two if we can, and even if it is, we don't have anything we could do right now. There's literally nothing we could do if we found out a big huge asteroid was coming to hit our planet in six months. We wouldn't have anything we would be able to do. I'm not joking. And that's a scary thought for me. Because I think about those kind of things. I, I like space. I think about space. I, I, I like knowing about the future of what humanity will be doing in space. And this is something that should be on the forefront. Okay, Getting satellites out there that are specifically designed to mark the trajectory of asteroids that are in the solar system that could potentially be threats. The Amuamua came in from interstellar stellar space and accelerated out of inter, back into interstellar space. So not only do we have things that are in our own solar system that we have to worry about, I mean, who's to say we, we aren't going to have some interstellar object or, or maybe there's a, like a, a massive field of asteroids that are just sitting out in interstellar space that our solar system might collide with eventually. Our solar system is moving. I think it's like 60,000 miles a second or some crazy number. Let me, let, me, let me look this up right now. How fast is our solar system moving? Let's see what comes up. How fast are we moving through space? That's cool. Let's do with that. Let's see. According to relativity, there is no universal frame of reference, but the Big Bang gives us one anyway. Yes, because we know that the Earth or the the universe is expanding, so there is a center. Seventeen hundred kilometers an hour. Okay, okay, that's how fast the Earth is moving. Let's see how f thirty kilometers a second. Okay, so that's how much. But how fast is the Sun moving? Oh, here we go. This this is the what I'm thinking of. Okay, so this is all the planets orbiting around the sun which is actually moving through the the you know space really kind of a, a crazy uh thought to think about we're going real fast we're going real fast <laughs> uh ooh this is cool let's check this out this is uh what is this here this is a really amazing image here cool anyway i love space have you noticed oh are you are you upset UFO the UFO just bounced out okay I'll fix you goodness sakes come on come on be nice thank you thank you
Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We don't know that it is just a theory. Um, I, I get I, someone just said that in chat. Yeah, I mean, I believe it though. I mean, stars are moving in space. We know that. Why wouldn't? Why would our star be, you know, static? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, a thousand to thousands of years ago, we thought Earth was the center. Everything moved around Earth. What well, we found out, we actually move around the sun. So why would the sun be? solid and everything else move around the sun i mean it feels like that's ignorant thinking you know sure we don't have uh you know we don't have proof of that um but you know i think logic logically which is how i like to go what i like to go on it makes sense so anyway expect a lot more of this kind of stuff because i love chat or i, lo I love space well, i do love chat um, I looked over and I saw 1776 concurrent viewers and it threw me off. I was like, I love chat, uh, 1776. Well, now we've got, uh, a lot more. Thank you all. 